guys, I sure come out to you today in Raid Shadow Legends, and boy, do I have a treat for you today. I am going to share my absolute favorite combination in the game right now. I don't know, it's I can't sit here and say it's stronger than any legendary combination in the game, but they're both epic champions, and I am just having so much fun using this tandem together. So, well, I guess sit back, relax, and enjoy. Welcome to the video, guys. Send us some positive vibes, especially if you need there some love your way today. Oh, man. All right, so how am I gonna do this video? I should probably plan these things before I hit record, huh? You think so? Might be a good idea. I'm just gonna Gonna reveal the champs. I'm gonna. Re I'm probably gonna put it on the thumbnail anyway. Who cares, right? But dude, this this combo is so insane together, man. Whew. All right, it is Dark Kale and a Kemptum. Okay, uh, let's start with a Kemptum. He's a newish uh, Void Skinwalker. This dude is. Whew. There hasn't been a void that came out that is this special. Are we still talking about me? Uh, excuse me, a void, an epic for that matter, who came out that is this special. Maybe with like Nutcracker and Taurus and Breachka, there has been a void or two that's come out that's been nice in the last few months. But a Kemptum is really, really nasty. It's my favorite epic. Him and he and Tagore are probably my favorite epics released in the last year, personally. Anyway, digressing back to the point here. Akemptum, and we will see some Tagore in today's video too. Uh, Akemptum is insane, guys. You can see I haven't built in Relentless. I'm gonna go over his kit quickly. It's not meant to be a champion guide per se, but uh, I will have guides on both these champions on my Ash, or it's not even called Ash, is it? It's my Raid Shadow Legends Champion Guides YouTube channel. Believe me, I know. So a triple hitter, each hit has a 50% chance of placing a poison for two turns. And the target is under uh, Hex. Will also Each hit also has a 50% chance of applying a debuff spread. Taking a random debuff from the target and placing it on all enemies. Okay? So triple hitter, poison. If they're under Hex, debuff spread. On the A2, attacks all enemies. Not once, not twice, but three times. This guy's a beast with Giant Slayer. Two triple hitters. And this one's on an AoE, right? Each hit has a 75% chance of increasing the duration of any hex debuffs on, on enemies by one turn. So a hex increaser, right? If enemies are not under hex, well, each hit has a 75% chance of placing a hex for two turns. Awesome. On his passive, hex blood has a 100% chance of inflicting damage from one poison debuff to enemies under hex debuffs whenever their allies receive damage from poison debuffs. Again, 100% chance of inflicting damage from a poison debuff to enemies under hex debuffs whenever their allies receive damage from a poison debuff. Before I show you how I have them geared out, let's go right to Dark Kale. Dark Kale, a tra and just look at this synergy. It's, it's nasty, it's insane. Attacks one enemy three times. Each hit has a 35% chance to instantly activate two poisons or a poison and an HP burn. Okay, great. On his A2, Binding Darkness, attacks all all enemies, 100% chance of placing decreased attack. Each critical hit also has 100% chance of increasing the duration of all debuffs on the target. So we're increasing those poisons as they're activated, both by Dark Kale and in the passive on a Kemptum, and we're also extending the durations even more of the hexes, and because of the debuff spread, we're extending everything that he's spreading off of the A1. When you see it in action, you'll be like, whoa. Uh, it's like, it's insane. Okay, uh, on Reality Acid, 100% chance of placing three poisons and a poison sensitivity on the target for two turns. Again, that poison sensitivity has a good shot of being spread off a of Kentum off the A1, and those hexes never fall off, okay? So, great synergy. Wait till you see them together. It's, it's absolutely insane. I have Phantom Touch on Kale, and I would also use Phantom Touch Blessing on a Kemptum for that extra hit. Now it's four hits, essentially, off of that A1. In terms of artifacts, we have a Relentless set. We have Perception on a Kemptum. A Kemptum, obviously, we need accuracy on both of these champions. We have him at 105, 125, and as fast as we possibly can with some survivability on this champion as well. We have Speed on the Boots. We have... Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it! Okay, Plarium Play, come on here. Probably my computer because I'm rendering in the background. I'm blaming Plarium uh, Play. Attack percentage on the chest. We have crit rate on the gauntlets. We went with a uh, some survivability, I'm sure, here on the, uh, the accessories. We have HP on the banner. We have crit damage on the, uh, the amulet. And we have HP again on the ring. Again, I want some survivability, especially for my accessories, because it doesn't scale that well. 16k on the HP, 881 on the defense, on the base stats here. And hey, speaking of defense, let's get this shield upgraded, man. Come on. 
Okay, let's, let's do this. I haven't even glyphed him out. I don't have ascended artifacts on these champions. So while the gear is good, it's not like it's, it's not my god tier gear on the account, okay? Uh, so wait till you, I'm, I have like two fun areas to run. Uh, I lied. I do have one little point of ascension here on this, uh, on this helmet. But Relentless is amazing on this champion because, I mean, you build him speedy with Relentless and it's just more of all the amazingness that is a Kemptum. He is, in my mind, He's a four out or a five uh, star out of five uh, epic champion. And the same thing with Dark Kale. If I had to rank my top 10 epics in the game right now, both of these champions would be on it. Both of uh, Dark Kale and a Kempton. Uh, okay, masteries on this champion really quickly, guys. Again, not meant to be an individual champion guide, so I just want to show you, you know, them quickly. If you want to screenshot or do anything, you you can. I guess noteworthy here, Master Hexer, extend the duration of all his debuffs. It's going to be great. And Sniper to get that from an 80 to an 85 or a 75 to an 80 on the A2. I forgot the exact percentages, but we do want Sniper on uh, Akemptum. And then Giant Slayer on both these champions is going to be super important, okay? Uh, also, we have Lord of Steel, even though we only have one perception set, but we'll still take it there. On Dark Kale. We have triple perception on Dark Kale. In terms of total stats, 41k, 3,000 on the defense, 3,000 on the attack, 91, 196, 325 on the accuracy. It, to me, it's not super instrumental, paramount to having success with Dark Kale to get him at 100% crit rate. We do have some damage on him, but he's getting most of his damage from all those poisons that he brings to the table and the instant activations on the A1. Ergo, accuracy is most important on this beast, this god of an epic champion, really this legend in disguise so we're prioritizing accuracy and speed on kale with some survivability we have on the banner drum roll please okay we have attack on the banner we have crit damage on the amulet we have hp on the ring on the boots obviously we have speed on the chest i'm guessing here we have defense percentage uh, it does scale pretty well at a thousand uh, and then we have crit damage on the gauntlets. Uh, we also are looking for crit rate and speed accuracy as substats on the rest of our artifacts here on masteries on this champion. We have Giant Slayer, of course. I'll move out of the way really quickly. We have Giant Slayer for the triple hitter on the A1. We come down, we pick up Lore of Steel. is going to be a must-have because we're running triple perception here. It works on all three of the sets, obviously. Uh, we come down, we grab the, the accuracy masteries. We end with Master Hexer to extend the duration of his debuffs. And we have... Some, wait... You ever do this? You ever look at your masteries and think to yourself, like, I don't think he needs a sniper for anything. I think he has the 100% on everything. So, hey, I would actually take away sniper from from Dark Kale <laughs> now that I look back. Oops. Should do this before the video, Ash. When you're prepping, I'd probably pick up Spirit Haste or uh, perhaps Methodical instead. Uh, so, yeah, make that change. Do as I say, not as I do. All right, guys. So, here we go. Uh, that's the artifacts. That's the build on these champions. Let's watch them together and stop blabbing about them and just do the damn thing here. We go. All right, starting out Ice Golem's Peak here, guys. We're gonna go stage 25 and we're gonna have an epic only squad. <laughs> That's my hard floor 10 team. No, no, no. We're gonna go with this team. I just showed you guys. I let's see. Do I need do I need can Lorne the cutter? Can he get the job done here? I don't know if I want Lorne. I just did a guide on him on the other channel, so I was kind of messing around and subbing in and out. I think I will go with the speed on the uh, Deacon Armstrong. So Deacon's my debuffer. I have support here in uh, in Tagore, and let's let's run something somebody that we haven't talked about a lot here on the channel. Let's go let's go with Skaramis, right? Just want to make sure he has gear on him. Yeah, he's good to go. He's good to go. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So my epic only squad here, stage twenty five Ice Golem. I'm gonna hit a hard. Fire Knight hard with this squad after this. Might sub out one of the other champions, but, you know, for the most part, it's going to be the same idea. But check this out, guys. Check this team freaking out, man. Well, look at this synergy. Just look at the debuffs. So we got the hexes. Kale's like, okay, I'm going to come in here, play some decrease attack. I'm going to extend the duration of everything, right? And wait till you see. Th these guys, what's so crazy about this is the longer these two, this tandem goes together... All these debuffs are never going to get stripped off. We're going to get instant activation poisons everywhere from the A1 and the passive of a Kemptum and Dark Kale. These are level 350 uh, mobs, right? They take forever. Unless you have a Seer combusted uh, Karma Burn team or like an Eleanor or a Xavier team, 
these even legendaries take forever to go through these guys but it's hard to, it's hard to kind of notice everything but all these instant activations and buff durations i mean in all the hex it's they bleed through mobs we have deacon armstrong on the team for debuffs but we don't even really need decreased defense. Look at these turns, eight turns of Hex, three turns of Poison, that's including the instant activations too. Wow, I mean, I, I think this sort of a team can bleed through like any wave so quickly, man. These two champions together is nasty. They're like built for one another with the buff extensions, the instant activation synergy. I ran them together at just, I was just experimenting to do a, I was actually going to do a guide on Lorne the Cutter on the other channel, which I just did uh, yesterday or the day before. And as I was doing that, okay, I'm like, I need a, I need a good like damage duo to kind of to put in tandem if I was going to make some all epic teams alongside him. And then I kind of ran to, I'm like, who can I put with a Kentum? I think this champion's so good. Who can I run with him that really takes, you know, an epic champion that really gets all the utility out of his kit? And I'm like, wait, Dark Kale, you know, secret room, normal champion right there in Doom Tower. Why wouldn't he work really well with him? And boy, oh boy, they're fun together, man. They're two of the strongest wave clearers out there. That's the triple hitter right there of a Kentum. By the way, we do have the, in case you're curious about Skaramis' kit, I'm going to do a guide on him soon on the other channel. Probably not this channel. I'm trying to reserve the main channel for the best of the best champions. Like people that I would no brainer 100% invest in every account basically, right? Uh, and then everybody else gonna be on the other channel. Cause I don't wanna, man, doing guides on champions that, <laughs> that aren't probably worth upgrading for the majority of players. I don't wanna talk. Or, or maybe just taking a level 50 or something like that. I want something that's gonna appeal to everybody, the, the masses, right? So again, you guys are seeing that we're going through here. Skoramis, what I was gonna say guys, is that he is, uh, He's a great control champion. He's a three-turn provoke, and it's just—it's—it's it's not a guaranteed it takes accuracy and, stuff and whatnot. But it's—it's—he's uh, it's, placing it. It's not predicated on a critical hit or anything like that here. So again, this team—the cool thing about this team, right, is that it's—it hasn't—it's looked so strong the entire time. Meaning that like no one's died. If they did, we had a reviver. But no one's died. No one's come close to dying. And here we go, stage twenty-five, ice golem. Let's see what we can do. Tagore 2 has a revive, an AoE revive on his A3, and he's got an increased speed big version on his A2 ability. It's probably one of my favorite. He's probably my favorite epic reviver, uh, non-void, you know? It's hard to compare him to like, uh, well, I guess I would put him up there with like, you know, uh, Ursula and and Godseeker and Neri in his own way, you know? Check out all these debuffs already, guys. We just got started here on the Ice Golem, and we're already wrecking. <laughs> And I had been waiting such a long time for this. Big hit coming in. No worries. Don't panic. We're all good. We get the revive. <laughs> That's why we have a reviver. This is stage 25 with an all epic team. Need I remind you guys. We come in here. Everything's back. We're good. All right. And that's why we build our Tagore, whoever your reviver is, we build them extra tanky. That way, in case that happens, we're going to be good to go. All right, so Skaramis is, oh, he, I was, I was going to say, excuse me, he was going to die there, but he doesn't. We're all alive. Man, nice little heal goes down, and we're back to, we're back in business here. And obviously, that debuff spread, it was hard to notice on the A1 of a Kempton, but he, really taking down those two minions of the Ice Golem with ease there. And again, we're good to go, man. This one's over. This one is over, and I love these champions together, man. They put out so much damage. Uh, Dark Kale 2 has a passive where he's mitigating crit rates, which is really helpful. Uh, it's, it's, it's a 15% crit rate reduction on enemies under poison, I want to say. And boy, that it comes in really handy because those critical hits on some of these bosses, and it's only a 15% crit rate anyway that they have, right? Uh, but when they land those crits, it can just destroy the entire team, kind of like that one. But again, we're good. We're good. Revive and go again. So I gotta say guys, I've ran this team together now quite a few times. It always looks the same, right? We wipe a few times. Uh, well, not to gore, but the rest of the team wipes a few times. Uh, but basically it's, uh, you know, 
I don't want to say 100. Look at 10 turns of hex right now. 10 turns because of a Kemptim's uh, increasing the durations, right? How? What? what do you mean how? I actually ran this team with Lorne in the... Uh, in the other spot there, in uh, whatchamacallit spot, uh, Skaramis. But I feel like he did a pretty good job. Uh, all right, so what do we have? A mythical? Uh, no, okay, so provoke provoke sets, man. Talk about, you know what? I'm so not used to seeing uh, provoke that I'm like, what is that, mythical? Because I just saw the, the border. Uh, all right, let's uh, get rid of that. Provoke needs a big rework, a big buff, in my opinion. I mean, attack with speed and crit rate. Offensive sets, I don't think I've ever used one, but I guess I'll keep that weapon. It's it's pretty dang good, right? All right, guys, let's go to a uh, Fire Knight. Let's go to Fire Knight hard. And I'm not gonna, well, you know what? I was gonna say, I'm not gonna show you the waves, but let's chill for a little bit. You clicked on the video, let's do it. Let's go to stage one. I wanna go against uh, Spirit Affinity, and it is an all rare team here, so cut me some slack. Lorne, you're in. Skaramis, you're out. Here we go. So the same squad otherwise. Keep in mind, both these champions, Dark Kale and Akentum, again, they have those triple hitters on the A1. They're beasts at Fire Knight. They're really beasts pretty much everywhere, right? So there's the triple hitter. There's the hex on everybody. Beautiful. That's the, the Kale. Dark Kale comes in, extends the duration. And Lorne comes in in there doing a little bit of DPS. You see that debuff spread right there? I mean, now it's just a matter of time. Everybody's going to be dead. Again, these are level 350. It's not like we're going after Fire Knight, you know, 20 here on the channel, right? Uh, we're going after the big boys. All right, so I'll come back at you when we get to the tainted Fyro here. I'll be right back. All right, guys, here we go. Got through those waves with ease, and here he is. So we're just going to pound the A1s here. Keep in mind, again, actually, I'm going to go with the A2. This is the A2 of Tagore I was mentioning. He has the increased speed. He's got the heal as well on all allies. Lorne the Cutter is very good because he has a uh, he has heal reduction on his A2 ability. So we get the triple hit here. We get the triple hit here. We're going to get another triple hit right over here. And the shield is about to be down. Let's go with Phil Turn Meter here. Go A1, get that shield down, come in A1 here. He also has an increased defense on his A1 on the ally with the lowest HP. You'd love to see that. We're going to get another triple hitter here and start placing those hexes. We're going to come in with the uh, poison sensitivity and the poisons. We're going to come in with the heal reduction from Lorne and the leech. And then we have to take a big, 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 big boy hit there from the Fire Knight. Come in again, A1. We're gonna come in again, A1. We got a double hitter on Tagore. We got a double hitter on uh, on uh, Deacon Armstrong. Triple hitter on everybody else on this team. If you don't have like all these champions, you want to run a team like somewhat similar. You can actually run in like an ally attack champion in the spot of like Lorne, you know, uh, just to get those hits up on the shield. So now we can go with A2. Refresh that increased speed, and then we can go with time compression, extra turn, and apply the decreased defense. And then we can come in here on the A1. We're not going to use the A3. Of Lorne on this A3 has 100% turn meter manipulation, but obviously it's not going to help us in the hard version of the Fire Knight here. Uh, we can come in again on the A3, A2, and at this point, we're looking at the duration of all these debuffs. We might be good just spamming A1 here with uh, with uh, Dark Kale from here on out. So, shield goes down again, 15 turns, but with this squad, no big deal. Triple hitter, triple hitter. Come in, triple hitter again. This is why we want these champions nice and fast, especially for Fire Knight, right? But just in general, you know, speed is almost always a good thing, unless uh, we're talking about like a go second team in the arena. All right, get that turn meter boost. Come in here, refresh the decrease defense. Uh, come in and re refresh the increase speed on the A2. And come in with the leech heal reduction refresh. Want to make sure that heal reduction is always on there. 
because Fire Knight healing, especially on hard, is a pain. Uh, let's just start hammering away with the A1 a little bit, get those instant activations off some of those poisons, right? And here we go. Man, the A1 of Deke hits pretty hard there, huh? I didn't see, it could have just been War Master, but either way. All right, let's do, so as A1 again, we get more poisons, uh, but I think I wanna, I think I wanna just go A2 here again, increase the duration. And then Dark Kale will go, eh, what do you guys think? Let's increase the duration, then we'll come back around in A1 the next go round. Make sure we can keep all those poisons up on the Fire Knight, right? So what do you guys think? Am I crazy? Or is this like the most OP combo ever? I'm really, really enjoying anywhere I can use these two champions together. I'm like trying to, you know, uh, try to talk myself down. Like, wait a second. A Kentum and Dark Kale could do this, you know? Like, even if there's a better like OP Void Legendary option, because I don't know what it is about them, honestly. They're just really fun to me. Like, really fun tandem to use together. I love the synergy in their kits, and it's just like, it's just insane damage that you're getting, you know? Uh, so here we go. Fire Knight about to be dead. Let's just spam some A1s here. What do you say? Boom, there we go. So not too bad, right? Not too bad. There's the mythical. But of course, it's it's a regen mythical chest plate. That's the good news. Bad news is it's crap. All right, let's sell that, guys. Thank you so much for watching till the end of the video. You can see the final tally, 1.3, 1.3. Like, the very similar in terms of their overall stats as well. Uh, thanks for watching till the end. And as always, take care, guys.